Hi, everybody. Sorry, I had some technical difficulties again, but I'm continuing to work on it. At some point, I'll get it right. Um, today, I'm going to talk about plant-based milk alternatives. So um, I hear a lot in my practice, both, both at my cancer treatment um, location where I work, the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, Mind body health, where I see a lot of patients who are um, going through infertility treatment, a lot of people looking for alternatives to drinking regular cow's milk. So I thought I would start off by talking about dairy cow's milk and why people might drink it and the nutritional attributes, and then talk about alternatives of how to get um, the most out of a plant-based milk alternative. So the first thing I wanted to do is just look at a milk carton. So this is Oakhurst Dairy is actually here in uh, New England. And see, it has this America's first dairy farm to take the pledge. So some of you may have noticed that some milk containers have this pledge that they say their farmers swear that they don't shoot their cows up with any kind of additional hormones. So they are the first dairy to do it. And I drink regular milk. I will um, say that right up front. Uh, I have three sons and uh, they all like to drink milk as well. So I probably should have bought a cow early in my life if I think about how much money I spent on milk. But I just wanted to point out that that pledge is actually an, a voluntary thing. It's not a regulation. So if someone is interested in buying milk that has no uh, validation of no additional hormones added to it, you want to buy organic milk. So there is no such thing as milk that has no hormones in it because it is a product of lactation. It's designed to feed baby cows. Um, there also isn't evidence at this point that tells us that milk is bad for people. So some people don't tolerate it, uh, whether it's the lactose in it or the protein that's in it. Um, some people, but you don't need to drink milk either. So, and I think anybody that has moderation in any kind of a food is never a bad idea. Um, in my estimation, moderation would be, you know, a serving or two a day. But what we tend to rely on milk for, uh, I, and by the way, I only managed to mention that other piece, and I don't want to get into a deep discussion about the controversies associated with dairy, because there's an awful lot about it on the internet, and we don't really have the time to discuss that today. So I just wanted to put out there that there are uh, very sound reasons why people may choose to drink regular milk, and if they're concerned about anything, moderation, serving or two a day. Um, I can't find any evidence to suggest that that's bad for people. So anyway, what people get from milk mostly is protein and calcium, which naturally occur in milk. Milk is also um, fortified with vitamin D. So back in the early 1900s, when they took children out of the fields and put them into the factories during the Industrial Revolution, they found that they were getting rickets, which is a bone demineralization um, disease caused by vitamin D deficiency. So for that reason, every eight ounce glass of cow's milk by law is fortified with 25% of the daily value, which it, at that point, um, baseline is 400 international units. So basically there's hundred international units of vitamin D added to every eight ounce cup of milk. So, when you're looking for a plant alternative, it depends upon what you're looking to replace by just setting the milk aside and going for a different source of milk. If you're just making a protein smoothie and there's also always, uh, excuse me, al already protein powder in there or Greek yogurt, and you're not relying on the protein, you just want something to thin it out, any kind of a milk will do. But what I did do is put together a little summary here that I'm going to refer to um, of different kinds of plant milks, and just to show you that most of them are uh, very, very low in protein. And that's because most plants, you need to eat more plant food to get more concentrated amounts of protein. So if you look at these options, we have, if you can see them, we have almond milk, cashew milk, coconut, not the stuff that you cook Caribbean food with, but a coconut milk beverage, you know, that looks like it comes box like milk flax milk, rice milk, and hemp milk. And you'll notice that all of, with the exception of hemp milk, only have one gram of protein in eight ounces. The hemp milk has three grams. So if you look at a label of cow's milk, you can see that, we'll see that cow's milk basically has a gram of protein per ounce or about eight grams of protein in a cup. 
So there are some uh, protein alternatives that come from plants that are enriched with extra plant protein to make them more concentrated sources of them. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention before I forget and looking at this list of uh, plant alternatives is rice milk is made from rice, obviously, and rice contains arsenic. So many people probably heard of that. And for that reason, it's not a bad idea to vary your up and not eat a ton of rice uh, daily, but it's important for children who have smaller bodies and, and contaminants could in their body. I, I can't think of a reason to drink rice milk anyway. I don't think it nutritionally has anything in it. So I also now want to show you some plant milk alternatives that actually are enriched with the first one. And I printed these out because I can't afford to buy too many products. The pictures will do. Ripple milk is made with pea protein. It's very thick. I never tell people what they're going to like or what they're not going to like because that depends on their personal taste. I've had many of my clients tell me that they really like the taste of this milk. And this milk has eight grams of protein in a cup. So again, this is called ripple milk and it has pea protein added to it. This one right here is called silk protein nut milk. This too also has pea protein added to it. So pea protein is a good concentrate of protein that allows them to get a lot of protein in a has in it as well, but the challenge with milks that are made like um, almond milk and cashew milk is I think there's the equivalent of like five or six nuts serving. So that is why the protein doesn't really add up. Though there are more, these are very popular categories and there are more of these coming onto the market that are almond milks that have more protein added to them. So again, just keep an eye on what's in the store or look at the ingredient label and look for at least seven grams of protein in a cup. That's a really good thing to kind of use the benchmark when you're looking for plant proteins is how much rated sources are in there. Is there enough to give me at least seven grams of protein in a cup? Unless you're not really relying on it to give you protein because for the most part, all of these pl uh, plant protein alternative milks are fortified with calcium and vitamin D. So not always, but very frequently, and you'll be able to see that on the label. They usually make a big deal out of it. This, because of the pea protein and the nut protein, a cup of this um, has 10 of protein. And again, I've had people tell me they really like the taste of it. Again, I know they're going to like, everybody's taste buds are different. And then I just wanted to mention the original plant protein milk, which is milk. So soy milk is generally averages between grams of protein per cup, depending upon how enriched it is, how concentrated. Soy milk is considered a whole soy food and whole soy foods overwhelmingly are associated with good health. So again, another controversial topic that maybe I'll talk about it at another, but I can tell you um, with confidence as far as I'm concerned that eating whole soy as part of a plant-based diet is a healthy thing to do. So that's not pills and powders and bars and, you know, concentrates to, to the extreme, but just having a glass of soy milk give you that grams of protein per ounce or in that vicinity um, is, is a perfect include in your diet. So just to kind of summarize, if you like cow's milk, then drink cow's milk. Uh, if you like to avoid additional hormones with on the non-binding nature of the farmers take the pledge, then you can buy cows so that there are not additional hormones injected into those cows. So again, that is label thing that has any teeth in it. But if you're looking for alternative and look for at least seven grams of protein in a cup and also be mindful of sugars. Notice they're sweetened and unsweetened. There's sweetened flavored, so the ones that are unsweetened generally don't have a lot of carbohydrates. So that can be good for people who are um, diabetic, pre-diabetic, my women with polycystic ovary syndrome, they're often uh, keeping an eye on their carbohydrate intake. Um, one other kind of milk that I actually thought was worth mentioning is actually cow's milk that is hypercentrifuged. It's called 
fair life milk. And I, I meant to produce a picture of that, but I didn't. So fair life, it's in the dairy section of the supermarket. It's pretty widely available. What they do is they centrifuge out some of the carbohydrate and concentrate what's left. So an eight ounce glass of fair life milk has six grams of protein. That's if it's not flavored. So I looked at the chocolate one last night in the supermarket that had 13 grams of, sorry, that's six grams of carbohydrate. So the chocolate fair life had 13 grams of carbohydrate because it's sweetened. Fair in an eight ounce cup is six grams of carbohydrate and 13. So it's very concentrated in protein. They just, my understanding is some of the water, including some of the carbohydrate concentrates what's left. This creamy feel has the calcium and the vitamin D and is actually considered lactose free because of the removal of some of the carbohydrates. So Hopefully that helps to clarify some of those issues and doesn't confuse you further. Um, and I'll see you soon.